Hello, greetings. I wanted to uh, come to you this way again through uh, video, continue to try to uh, be able to teach a little bit more, which is a little bit faster for me to be able to communicate it this way uh, rather than uh, writing out some of these points, although a lot of these points I've already shared in my writings and uh, letters to the Daily Prayer email group. So I wanted to be able to voice to you, to be able to share with you some of these uh, scriptures and po points of prayer that I want to give to you. Uh, there's about three different sections right now that the Lord's dealing with me on. And I don't have a complete conclusion to all of this, especially this one that I'm going to present to you right now. Uh, this is on the uh, issue of lostness and darkness that we're seeing in the, in the nations today. Uh, it's also addressed in the four areas that, we, that I encourage people to examine and to pray over. Is one, is it in your own life? Uh, two, is it in your family? Three, is it in the church? And four, is it in the nation? Those four topics uh, is how I address my prayers because it seems that if, if it's in the one, it's in the multitudes. And if it's in the multitudes, it's in the ones. And so it's a direct correspondence back and forth on this. So what I want to bring to you over the next several videos is some of these themes that God's dealing with me on. The one that I want to give to you today is about seeing and knowing. Though That seems to be a, a practical truth that is addressed throughout Scripture, which I'll give to you several references to that. And in your own convenience, you can have those to write down and look up. But the biggest thing is, is that how do you incorporate these verses into your prayer time? Uh, how do you address before the Lord God that which is on His heart, that He's already communicated to us in the Word? This is imperative for us as Christians today, that we see and we know what truth is, what He has said, and how we see it acting out in our present day, everyday living, whether it be salvation, whether it be uh, the ailments of the nation, whether it be the persecutions, whether it be the trials and the terrors that we see going on, He has given to us His Word that lets us see and know that all these things must come to pass. So, on our hearts and minds in a lot of these things is the very salvation of those that we love. Uh, you have family members, you have those that sit in the churches that are religious, meaning is that they... They may know in their minds, but it's not in their hearts. They, they have eyes to see, but they can't see, which is the, one of these references that I refer to uh, that's found throughout Scripture. So I want to I read to you today and give to you this overall premise, and it's not going to be a lengthy uh, conversation with you today. It's just to cut to the heart of this so that you have this, and you can talk uh, in your heart and in your mind with the Lord about this, of what he may say to you. And, and it's one of those things about how we can incorporate into our prayer meetings, prayer times, uh, and be able to see some advancement in this. So I want, first of all, I want to ask of you to take your Bibles and open up to Paul uh, talking his testimony in Acts chapter 26. And I'm going to read this, and then I want to share with you something in the Old Testament that delivers to us one of the issues and the problems uh, and then I'll communicate to you some of the other verses and then the pointed facts about how we need to pray over this. So if you take your Bibles and open up to Acts chapter 26, we're going to look at uh, verse 14 through 23. Now, Paul's been arrested. You, you should know this account in the scriptures here. Paul has been arrested, and he is allowed in the opportunity um, several times to address King Agrippa, Festus, uh, he even stood before in Rome in the accounts of giving to the Jews that were in Rome, as well before Caesar's bar, uh, his personal testament. And chapter 26, there is this reference that he tells us about his salvation experience on the road to Damascus found in Acts chapter 9. Now, from 14 through 23, I want to read what Christ said to him as his mission, as his object, and then let you see how this is incorporated in my heart presently about what I think one of the things that we are attacking in our prayer lives and what we need to do. So in Acts chapter 26, verse 14, And when we were all fallen to the earth, I heard a voice speaking unto me and saying in the Hebrew tongue, 
Saul, Saul, why persecutest thou me? Is it, hard, it is hard for thee to kick against the pricks. And I said, Who art thou, Lord? And he said, I am Jesus, whom thou persecutest. But rise, stand upon thy feet, for I have appeared unto you for this purpose, to make thee a, a minister and a witness both of these things which you have seen, this is the, the key here, and of those things in the which I will appear unto you, delivering you from the people and from the Gentiles unto whom I send you. And again, here is the object, to open their eyes and to turn them from darkness to light and from the power of Satan unto God, that they may receive forgiveness of sins and inheritance among them which are sanctified by faith that is in me. Whereupon, O King Agrippa, I was not disobedient unto the heavenly calling, but showed first unto them of Damascus and at Jerusalem and throughout all the coast of Judea, and then to the Gentiles, that they should repent and turn to God and do works meet for repentance. For these causes the Jews caught me in the temple, and they went about to kill me. Having therefore obtained help of God, I continue unto this day, witnessing both to small and great, saying unto them these things, uh, those which the prophets and Moses did say should come, that Christ should suffer, that he should be the first, and that should rise from the dead, and should show light unto the people and to the Gentiles. Now, these verses here is Paul's testimony. And he is simply declaring what happened to him on the Damascus Road, what Christ spoke to him. And found within these verses here is some of these, these truths that to me needs to, for us to examine and be incorporated into our hearts about how we're thinking about things. How we see lost souls, how we see the church, uh, and the gross darkness that's out there in the nations today. Now, there, to me, there's two things here that's key. And the first one is, is that one, we have eyes to see, but we can't see. Now, that's found multiple times in the scripture, uh, especially Isaiah spoke it, um, and then Christ comes along and he says the exact same thing in the Gospels. Uh, you have eyes to see, but you can't see. And of course, the Pharisees being religious, that was part of their, their problem. They had eyes, but they couldn't see. The Messiah was right in front of them, and they didn't see it, and they didn't know it. Now, this, is not, this has been a constant problem for humanity. Uh, you can trace this clear back to Genesis. You can go back to the uh, time of Noah uh, when, when men did wickedly upon the earth and, and that we say, why was there such a predominance of evil during the days of Noah? Why, when God searched all of his creation, could he only find one righteous? Why in Sodom and Gomorrah, when God said to Abraham, Abraham and God having that intercessory communication there, and that he went, if you can find 50 righteous, I, I will spare it, 40, 30, 20. If you can find 10 righteous in, in this city of thousands, I'll spare it. Now, Lot was the only one in his two daughters that got out. Why is that? And why is it that in the United States today, where there's a church every half a mile uh, to mile, while, while there is DVDs, CDs, tapes, ministries galore, while there's seminaries, Bible schools. Uh, the, why is the church scattered throughout the United States today and we still have the same problem? So we identify the problem. Men have eyes, but they cannot see. They have minds and hearts, but they cannot know. Now here... Uh, two portions of scripture that I want to give to you that I think will help us in our praying where the answer is found. It's not just good enough to present people the truth. Men can be presented the truth and still understand the truth but not receive the truth. And that a lot of communication today might happen from the pulpits to the pews to say, I heard the gospel. Well, that's wonderful that you heard the gospel, but did you receive the gospel? Uh, John chapter 1, verse 12, To as many as would receive him, to them gave he power to become the sons of God. So it's receiving after they have had their eyes to be open and their minds to know the truth. And again, we see this as a constant thing throughout Scripture, that there's a blockage. And this blockage is what we must pray against and what we must fight against. So go back to the book of Deuteronomy, chapter 29, Moses, in the book of Deuteronomy, there is numerous truths that at some point in my 
opportunity, I pray that I'll be able to communicate with you all that God has uh, blessed me in that book. Uh, Deuteronomy is just profound with numerous things that we're facing today that I've incorporated in my prayer and study time. But in those, that's the last words and testament of Moses to the children of Israel before he dies. He communicates his desire over and over. Take heed, take heed, take heed. And at the end of, end of the book of Deuteronomy, chapter 29, he expresses to them it, one of the issues that has allowed for their rebellion, their murmurings, to last for 40 years in the wilderness. And in 29.4 he says it. He said, God has not given you a, a eyes to see or a heart to perceive unto this day. Now, at the death of Moses, after being led 40 years in the wilderness, here's Moses' observation and testimony about their continued defiance and rebellion. That they had eyes, but they couldn't see. And they had a heart to perceive, but they couldn't do it. Now, he says, but now God has opened your eyes, and he has opened your heart to receive. So that begins to give us the first directive there in our prayers. Why do our loved ones remain lost? Why does our nation and the nations of the earth remain in darkness, gross darkness? It's because God has not opened their eyes to see, nor their hearts to perceive or receive this gospel message of truth yet. Now there are numerous other factors that go into this. Uh, we, we don't have time to cover all those things because we know the gospel has appeared, Titus chapter 2, the gospel has appeared unto all men. Simply appearing to men does not mean again that they are going to understand it completely nor receive it completely. Now you and I are in a place is that we must pray that it would be fully presented fully received because again Satan takes the gospel and makes half truths out of it then leads that into whole lies and we see that in the cults uh, and the false religions that are out there today this, the false religion of humanism that seems so steeped in our churches today has deceived and lied to many of people that they they see truth but they don't really see it and so we come to the issue of, of having the eyes and the heart that we must be praying for. Lord, open the eyes of the blind. Lord, open their hearts that they can receive. And again, the fulfillment of, of Deuteronomy 29, that God would say to our loved ones, to the churches today, you have, not, you have eyes and a heart, but you have not been able to see nor receive unto this day. So Lord, let this be the day. What day? Hebrews. Today is the day of salvation. Now is the accepting time. Pray in agreement with Scripture of what God is communicating to us on this. Now the other portion of scripture that I would give to you that we're fighting uh, in this battle is found in Isaiah chapter 44 verses 18 and 19. Now again prophetic words about the Messiah, about Christ when he would come and should come uh, of one of the things that we're facing. Uh, verse 18, Isaiah 44 verse 18. They have not known nor understood for he has shut their eyes and that they cannot see, and he has shut their hearts that they cannot understand. And now, uh, and none considers in his heart, neither is there knowledge nor understanding to say, I have burned part of it in the fire, yea, also I have baked bread upon the coals thereof, I have roasted flesh and eaten it, and shall I make the residue thereof an abomination? Shall I fall down to the stalk of a tree? Now, in this portion of Scripture, God's addressing their uh, adultery and their falsehoods that they are putting in the creations of their false gods, burning and sacrificing uh, the fires and the incense and, and the roast offerings and those kind of things. And he addresses it. How is it that this people, my people, that having the law, having heard, having seen, all the miracles and all that the prophets had taught to them and instructed to them that they would fall prey to this lie and to this deception. And I would dare say is that that argument is there for us again. Why, why is the church having such truth, having such revelation, having such uh, great preachers and teachers in, throughout the centuries that have been laid for us, how is it that we still have eyes but can't see? And we still have hearts but we can't understand. Isaiah 44 and Acts tells us that God is the one that opens the eyes and the hearts. Now you and I, to enter into an agreement now in prayer for this, 
to understand this, this message which has been traced that I've given to you uh, from Genesis to Deuteronomy, from Je Deuteronomy to Isaiah, from Isaiah, uh, there's even a reference in I from Isaiah the prophet to Ezekiel the prophet, where you have that hundred years between Isaiah and Ezekiel. In Ezekiel chapter 12, I believe it is, that it says in verse 2 there, he says, and again, here's my people who have eyes but cannot see, and they have ears but they cannot hear. And, and then from Ezekiel on into the uh, Gospels where Christ appears, and he repeats the message of the prophets. And then here we have Christ speaking to Paul in the, back, in the book of Acts, at the, the Damascus Road. And here's Paul now at the end of his life, and he's testifying to uh, the leaders uh, of the Roman Empire and, and to those that were listening to him and to the Jews that were in the church of Rome. And, and we see this from Genesis to Acts. And the testimony is now lived out in our life today, what we see across the landscape. It's still the same issue and it's still the same problem. Let our prayers go forward to address this which is most crucial. Uh, most people are not found in a place of complete ignorance. Not that they, that they don't know, that they don't have opportunity. Uh, our freedom in our nation allows for anybody to walk into the wor worship service of a church and hear the communicating of the gospel so that they might know. But again, if the Holy Spirit's not there to, to draw them and to convict them and to open their eyes, then they'll go right back out, still blind, still deaf, and still hard hearts. Now, we're facing a society today that has very hard hearts. And you and I, to be in prayer against this, Satan holds them there, keeps them there. We see it in the scriptures here. Our labors of prayer must be against the works of Satan, must be against the works of the flesh that continues to keep men in darkness, in lostness, and separated and void of the gospel. Now, there are numerous verses that I did not communicate to you today in Scripture that you will surely know uh, just as well as I do. But I have tried to lump some this continued theme that keeps popping out of Scripture to me. And I could take a uh, hundred different individuals that, I, that I'm praying for and dealing with today in families, in my community, in my churches, the same as you have communicated uh, in, your, in where you're at. And, and we're facing this. This is the hard issue about what's going on today. And... We know the miracles of Christ. He came to blind Bartimaeus and he said, what would you have me do? And he said that I might receive my sight. And, and there are countless other examples of that same healing power that he opened up the ears of the deaf, he opened up the blind eyes. Now that's the physical capacities of that. He raised the dead, dead men. He raised Lazarus. Lazarus come forth. He raised uh, the son uh, of the widow woman in name. Uh, we see this is a constant thing, brought back from deadness unto life. Now, all those physical components of eyesight, hearing, and, and from death to life is the same spiritual component that we must pray for today. Lord, they have eyes, now let them see. Lord, they have ears, now let them hear. And again, there are a whole lot of other issues. If they're in a place of, of not hearing the gospel, the whole truth, then we got to pray against that. But let it not be the individual that hears and rejects. Let it not be the hard heart of so callous and so perverse and so in love with themselves that they don't understand eternity's coming. It's that eternal values that is set in front of us. We must make men to see that the eternal God sees their sins that is going to cost them eternally in hell. And we have to pray against that. We have to communicate that, just as Paul was doing there in Acts that I read to you. And he did it over in Acts 28 to the Jews, that the gospel has gone out to the Gentiles, and they will receive it. So let's pray for the nation and the kingdom to receive the gospel, to respond to the gospel, and let us prevail in our prayers over the eyesight, over the, over the hearts and the minds to receive it, and over the ears to hear it, praying for those components spiritually that God would bless it and God would honor it. Now your prayers, my prayers in agreement for the nations to be uh, receptive to the gospel. Your prayers, my prayers in agreement for the furtherance of the kingdom. Your prayers, my prayers fighting this work of darkness that keeps men blind, keeps them deaf, and keeps them hard-hearted and, and rejecting of, the, of their minds to receive 
the knowledge of the truth. We're praying against that. And we're asking for the Holy Spirit to put Satan down and to be glorified in the midst of this. I wanted to communicate this with you. This is something that in scriptures I, I preached it and I've been writing about it. So I wanted to bring this all before you video-wise so that you can take it and hopefully it will be some assistance to you as you're praying for your lost uh, community, our nation, uh, and your, especially your lost loved ones that are so precious to you. This is the root of the problem, and this is how we're supposed to be addressing it. God bless you.